Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week. This is the one show where you don't have to make any judgment whatsoever because we do it all for you. Uh, it is, of course, Friday night. This is Talk TV. I'm Mike Graham and I've got a fantastic panel with which to choose who's going to be Plank of the Week. We've got Leon Amarali, we've got Chloe Dobbs, we've got Mike Will Geddes. I hope you said Mike Geddes. <laughs> you can call uh, me and Mike. Amanda <laughs> Devlin as well. I'll call you all Mike, it'll be easier. Um, and they're all going to fight for this, the Plank <laughs> of the Week. And so, let's get right to it. Leon, who's your first nominee? This is uh, a lefty mayor. I like this. One. Mayor Good of start. Brussels, yes. Philippe Claus. Yeah, uh, he, he oh, Philippe Leon. far away. Leon. He shut down. <laughs> he shut down the NatCon event, which had speakers there oh, like yes. Nigel Farage, yeah. Yeah. like Suella Braverman. Yes, these yeah. extreme right wingers, apparently. Yeah, oh. far right. You far them, right. They? Yeah, and he sent in armed police. Of course, they're all armed in. No, in they Brussels, looked like they were from Thunderbird. That's <laughs> the, the great <laughs> uniforms, the funny little hats. Funny like, little hats. They yeah. used to wear those on British Caledonians. Yeah, yeah. Um, hilarious. And but he's got in this lefty mayor trying to shut down these right-wing thinkers, and yeah. it reminded me of something like Vladimir Putin would do. Yeah. I don't like your politics, I'm going to remove right. you entirely. What yeah. a joke, what but a But it fact. was quite insidious as well, wasn't it? Because they didn't say, we're going to stop you from speaking because you're horrible right-wing bigots. We're mm -hmm. going to stop you from speaking because there might be some trouble outside. Yeah. Because Antifa had said that they were going to turn up and cause a bit of trouble. And apparently there'd been three, I think two previous um, places where they'd wanted to hold the conference, right. which had cancelled it because of the threats that they'd had from, you know, the far left. Well, isn't that, isn't that the far left at fault then? Well, yeah. Shouldn't they be disturbed rather than yeah, these, these exactly. poor right-wingers? And, and didn't they, did, didn't the same mayor invite some controversial imam last year? Mm. To I don't know. Speak? Could or be. Something like that. But, yeah. I mean, the Belgian prime minister, to be fair, actually came out and said it was wrong, that he should never have done it. Yeah, a lot, so a lot of people... he's obviously acting within his own kind of remit, isn't he, this but guy? This is a trend, Mike, right? You get all of these lefty mayors of these big cities. Yeah. They act above their really? station. I, I can't imagine what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They, they never heard of yeah. And they damage diplomatic relationships. Yeah. And good for the Belgian mayor coming out saying, actually, this is wrong. Because, right. because it's not on the, the municipal leader of Brussels to yeah. suddenly decide to start this big diplomatic row with the UK and others. Well, I mean, right. this was terrifying because although we see events shut down all the time, comedy events and whatnot, because of you know, left-wing activist mm. groups coming outside. This is very different because this was someone in a position of power yeah. using the power of the state yes. to shut down an event. Of the police, yeah. Nigel Farage was there. Let's see what he had to say about it. Three mayors in Brussels in the course of the last three days have tried to literally close down this conference. Okay. And, and, you know, very often, yeah. very often, people say, oh, cancel culture doesn't really exist. Well, it does. Yeah. Free speech is about listening to points of view you may not agree with. All of this was being done in a peaceful, grown-up environment, and three Brussels mayors have really exposed, I'm afraid, what this European political project's about. If you don't agree, you're mad or bad. It's almost like the old days of the Soviet communists. Yeah. And Nigel said it was one of the first times he'd been back in Brussels since, yeah. you know, the Brexit party had sort of left because they, you know, left the European Union. And he was talking about how everyone's going, oh, well, at least you're stuck in Brussels with Nigel Farage. He knows where to go. He's banned from, like, loads of restaurants there. They won't oh, serve him. Brilliant. They won't let him in. Yeah. You know, I mean, Richard Tice has told me stories before. He's been skiing in Switzerland and he was standing in line to get into some restaurant with Isabel Oakeshott, yeah. and the guy started shouting at him. The Maitre Redeem mm. was like, you have left the European Union, you may not come to my restaurant. Oh, God's and sake. all this kind of madness. No. Yeah. I won't want to spend my money there anyway. No, yeah, but have, you been, have you been to Brussels? Yes. It's pretty rubbish anyway. Well, do you know, when yeah. I was in Brussels, a very odd thing happened. Uh, I was staying at the Hilton Hotel, yeah. and it was in the days when I still smoked, and I was smoking a cigarette in the lobby, and upstairs was my son, who was about one, and his mother, mm. and uh, these three rather attractive women came up to me. Um, one of them asked for a cigarette. Standard. And, yeah, yeah. I said, sure, have a cigarette. <laughs> and, then, and then she went, do you want sex? Yeah. And I went, not really. No. Um, <laughs> so you just be happy with a cigarette? <laughs> and then she was like, can they have one as well? I was all right then. But what, was, sex or a cigarette? Well, a cigarette. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I said, I've got a baby just upstairs. Just want to clarify. You know, I think all. they'd probably not be that keen if I suddenly turned up with three women in there. <laughs> And you're anyway, saying Brussels, of your Brussels new sounds great. Mike. So, I mean, that's my good. memory of Brussels recently. Um, let's see what Sir <laughs> Braverman had to say. It's a real shame that the, the thought police um, instructed by the mayor of Brussels has saw fit to try and undermine and uh, denigrate what is free speech and free debate. Um, I, I remember the words of Mrs Thatcher, and I'm going to misquote her, but the more ridiculous and far-fetched and extremist their attempts are to silence us, the more cheered on I am, because it just shows that they've lost, they've lost the political argument. Yes. Um, one of the good things, though, about this was that they were all locked in at one point, because yeah. apparently... Um, 
they were, they were all tweeting from inside the, the event saying, you know, we're not allowed to leave. If we leave, we won't be allowed back in. Yeah. And so apparently the guy that was running the venue cracked open the wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all sort of, That's you know, my kind of event, enjoy my... that sort it's of thing. Yes. Absolutely. Chloe, over to you. I'm back First moaning. time on Plank of the Week, That's by the true. way. That's true, yes. Welcome. I'm back moaning about Hamza Useless Excellent. again. Excellent. I've got some great Put news for you in a minute. Put him in Love Island and I'm, I'm back gonna... here to moan about him okay. again. <laughs> right. uh, this time he's in the news again because he has called J.K. Rowling ridiculous for saying... Is it pretty good coming from him? The most ridiculous leader of all time. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know. What a hypocrite. He's called J.K. Rowling ridiculous for saying that uh, Hamza Useless has contempt for women yeah. because of this... Uh, new misogyny law that he supposedly... Yeah, they're not happy with the hate law. They want another law now, don't they? Well, well? Well, 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 you see, what he tried to do was uh, sneakily make this hate crime law and have it uh, cover uh, transgender identity, right. but not sex or, or women. Right. Um, so transgen what? transgender people are protected under yes. the hate crime law, but women are women not. Women are not. And, and he, I guess he thought that maybe we might not notice, but of course right. we notice. Yeah. And, and so it's quite then a big miss, really. <laughs> I, I know. So, so now he's panicked and said, so oh, women... oh, don't worry, guys, we're going to bring in a misogyny law in Instead, but actually, oh, the misogyny. So people is... who identify as women are covered by it, but not actual women. In the right? hate, in the hate yeah. crime law, right. yes. Right. Now the I'm misogyny, just to this one out. the misogyny huh? law. The thing with this is, we thought, ah, oh, finally, he's going to bring something that actually protects women. But it doesn't just protect women; it protects men in dresses as well. So, that hence J.K. Rowling thinks it's yes. ridiculous. But well, I mean, I think J.K. Rowling's played an absolute blinder here. I mean, she has been single-handedly yeah. destroying. All of these yeah. idiots, these politically correct morons who yeah. think it's a good idea to sort of not be able to answer a question, what is a woman? And now they're all standing around going, oh, uh, well, now we can say what it is because now we've been told everything's OK again. Yeah. What's wrong with them? Yeah. You know what? I've never read a Harry Potter book, but I'm thinking of doing so now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to read them. You can just, have you can just buy them and put them on your shelf like most people do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this woke gender ideology is just running absolutely rife yeah. in Scotland. I mean, we've had one bit of good news today, um, which is that the uh, only gender clinic in Scotland is going to pause using yes. hormone blockers. So that's right. good. But you've got uh, this um, organisation called, uh, I think, called LGBT Scotland, yeah. is now trying to get LGBT champions in primary schools. Yes. They're trying to get kids as young as four years old right. to be LGBT it's champions. Bizarre. And they're encouraging them to ask all the other kids what their gender is. Right. Uh, I, I, I mean... Can I just teach them how to add up? Wouldn't that be better? I mean, well, that yeah. would or be useful. Or how to useful. spell yeah. pronunciation. This, this, <laughs> this all starts yeah. with the, the hate law uh, yeah, crime. Because it does. basically, it's a really fudged piece of legislation. Ended up with thousands of calls well, to police. Well, they had 8,000 reports in the first week. Completely right? inundated. Most of which were about Humza useless. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. <laughs> I didn't want to go. <laughs> so how well, does, wait, how I've got some better news for you. Even br as we speak, breaking news. Um, Nicola Sturgeon's husband, Peter Murrell, has been re-arrested. Brilliant. Literally in the last no few way. moments oh uh, over the SNP finance investigation. Nice. We don't know what that means. We don't know where it's going. Allegedly. But, well, no, he's been arrested. He hasn't been allegedly arrested. He's been arrested. <laughs> the other interesting but thing allegedly over in the SNP. Scotland yeah. is, is that they've completely decided to give up on their net zero yeah. um, promise. Oh, I saw that. And this is, the first, yeah. this is yeah. the first country in the world that decided to set net zero uh, targets, right? And they also, if you remember, had COP26 in Glasgow where yep. that mm. bloke and now uh, they've abandoned was weeping. Him. What was his... What was it? Alok Sharma. Yeah, Alok Sharma. Was weeping at the end of it. Sir Alok. Uh, is he now Sir? He is indeed. Yeah, great. Um, <laughs> well, apparently Scotland have decided they're, they're not going to hit the target, so they're just going to do away with them. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Ambition, All that hard eh? work. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's go to Humza Useless and see what he's got to say for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I love this clip. You know, it's, it's, it's I, it just keeps time. giving, doesn't it? Never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. Works. Let's have Bravo, another look. Sam. For Bravo. those who didn't catch it the last Can we do it again? Times. Yeah, yeah let's Please. do it. Yeah. Can we do it in slow mo? Well, I'd like to, actually, yeah. It's brilliant. This is when he decided to show off on his scooter. Oh, he actually cracking. asked I mean, for a camera. How does he? How can he mic that up? Oh uh, God! He's also the it? funniest yeah. thing about it is that apparently he'd asked for a photographer to be in the corridor to <laughs> show off <laughs> about how brilliant he was. It was, was actually pre-planned. Yes. That's what's so the photographer was actually it, yeah. asked to be there. Yeah. So that he could capture it. There we are. Brilliant. Well, Michael, can we get in slow mo? This shows how we need to remix it with some music. It says no. No. It says we can't. No. We'll work on it for the next time he gets nominated. Will, what's your first? Well, I've. Got a cracker here. Obviously, the the woke brigade have come in yet again into our lovely armed services. Yes. And um, and I think this is a, actually I think this is really sensible. Not um, what they've decided with the Royal Navy because obviously the recruitment numbers are down all over the place. The military really is suffering right now. But uh, the Royal Navy have decided it is now not compulsory 
to know how to swim. <laughs> uh, so I the, mean, after all, the, you're only going to be in a boat. Well, I mean, you're only be in a boat. They yeah. could sink. And, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how they fix that one. Uh, but, yes, there's it a... It would be a, helpful, I think. There's usually a swim. mandatory 30-minute swim, which is yeah. basically training Mind water. Mind you, you know, you don't have to be able to fly to be in the Royal uh, Air Force, do you? Yeah, but you're not equipped with wings, are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> necessarily. certainly not. So, so this whole business of you don't need to know how to swim just to get the numbers up, it really doesn't bode well for our future. And, and again, the, the, I hope someone in the, the marketing and media department decide not to put some nice little video out, recruitment video, I, I'd love to see it, though, yeah. of, uh, of saying, look, little Timmy, he wants to join the Royal Navy. Um, don't, here's your here's water, water wings. wings. Here's your water wings. Water wings. <laughs> or, or we'll give it you a nice Maybe unicorn, you, yeah. you know, ring, and he can... To be fair, I mean, apparently they used to give you lessons if you couldn't, if you couldn't. Yeah, quite right, absolutely. No, this is what they're suggesting yeah. now. They're they're saying, you don't need them. The, yeah. No, they're, they're saying they, they, you will get swimming lessons. You will, in order to eventually qualify, you will need to be able to Oh, swim. really? But the taxpayer's oh, going to taxpayer <laughs> have to cough up to pay for all these people who don't know how to swim at all. In oh, the first my next place, nominee is all about taking the taxpayers' I'm, money. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly worried about We can have all the guys on the on the ships just wearing armbands the whole yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> or just, a, you know, life jackets. But let's have <laughs> yeah. a look at one of the recruitment videos that we do have oh, right, for you. I this is the Royal Air Force oh, recruiting yeah. LGBTQ applicants. So the Royal Air Force do truly represent the LGBT community massively. We're so open to everything and anyone for any corners of the earth. So it's truly representative of the Air Force, especially at Rising Island as well. We're just open to everybody and yeah, couldn't be any more happier. From, from day one they've been really open about um, like who I am as a person. I have some struggles wearing very feminine clothing. Um, so when I got issued my kit it was, it was a little bit uncomfortable and I was worried about if I would be forced to wear it or not. I went straight to my corporal and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll change it. So you can have hot pants, madam, yeah. instead of obviously... I mean, uh, have they ever been in any battles, issues? these people? Uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm waiting to see them go out there, uh, What about the bullet wound in the side of your head, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, does it, I mean this, this, stuff this is where we've come to. If people shouldn't this play soft apart. are defending our country, I know. don't worry. Well, I people have said, is, if, yeah. we were, if we were in a position that Israel were last weekend mm. yeah. um, and they'd fired, like, 300 missiles at us from Iran, we'd all be toast. Yeah. You know, none of us would be here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really love doing the show, but it does depress me slightly. Does it? Or is that just me? Maybe no. it's you. Yeah. I think I come I away from that. I think actually every <laughs> single story that we always focus on every week, there's just something that's more ridiculous yeah. that you're just left shaking your head at. And you well, think, well, what is the world the point coming of the to? Show, and though, the fact that <laughs> totally, but it, just, it depresses me about the state of the world. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. fact yeah. that that's and, and it's only going to get worse because this is like a younger generation thing. And I'm saying that as someone yeah. who's younger generation, but it's it's. But Amanda, you look at the future and you think, oh my god, what's the happen? younger generation are turning against it because we've had it. Shut the sort down of the younger road. than Gen Z are. No, the younger. The younger 15, men, not 16 the younger year women. Olds. The young men are moving right and yeah. the young women are moving left, apparently. Well, that's good enough because, you know, I think that we do need to start saying this is ludicrous. What does it matter if you're if you're gay, if you're black, if you're, you know, diverse? What does it matter? As long There's as you can fight, gay people, people, as long as you've got... Been exactly, as long as you've got the ability to defend the country. Women right. In every branch of the military, the UK yeah. military. Exactly. What, what they've done is, what they did was probably, OK, maybe a they little bit harsh, flag, but though. it was more about, look, just get on and do the job alongside everybody else. No special dispensations can be made. And there isn't, when you're in a co conflict or a combat situation, there isn't special dispensation yeah. for Tristan But with to this stuff, across. aren't we yeah. highlighting the differences where we should just be accepting everyone and say, if you can fight, if you've got yeah. the ability, yeah. then come on, it and doesn't matter who you are. And it's bad, though, that my first thought was actually thinking, this is going to spoil the Royal Navy uniform, like all the <laughs> fit guys, and they're going to have their armbands on. It's going to, like, really put they're me off. They're not as sexy, when they? It's not as sexy That camera is going to look pretty poor, isn't <laughs> it? No, exactly for right. For me, the most ridiculous <laughs> thing about this video was the guy's bowl cut. Yeah. That, that was, was a terrible horrifying. haircut. I mean, that looks like something you'd have gotten in the old press gang days, you know, back I can't talk. dragged off into I it. can't talk, but, well, you know. That's true, yeah. I mean, even you look better than him. Yeah. Um, even you? Wow. Even me. Yeah. What special dispensation oh. you're getting today. Yeah. Anyway, you'll just do your French Amanda. accent again. Amanda, over to you. What's your okay, nomination? Okay, so you'll definitely have heard of this story this week. This is about Meghan Markle. Oh, and yes. She's now selling jam because, yeah. you know... Why not? Why not? Jam. She's going to go for it. She's already Lots sold everything jam. else. 
So she's been sending it out them? to... About, yeah, apparently so. Oh, really? Sure. And she's, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's only her, in her <laughs> kitchen in her in millionaire kitchen. mansion. That's and, very good yeah, of her, yeah. She's just, I know, I, well, she's, you know, she's only got two kids. She's got time. She's I know, just, she's got nothing else to do with her time. stay at home mum. Yeah. Um, so you know they've actually hired a venue though to film in, so because a lot of her fans apparently were really looking forward to seeing her in her home <laughs> kitchen, but of course it's not her home kitchen. Come on, Mike, they've give stunted us, give us a it Megan up. Impression, they've please. stunted yeah. it up. Harry, Harry, <laughs> I'm going to make some jam. <laughs> Harry, Harry. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic, isn't it? It really is, and um, it's just another thing that you think, well, why is she? Why are we? Why, being, why do we have to suffer this? Yeah. Because she wants to come across in a certain way. Obviously, her popularity has just like plummeted, and and this is to make her look a bit more sort of it's more home and family yeah. and I mean, love. Do, like pickled and beetroot happiness. or something. And it's and this, yeah, what's the name? No, because that's what people what's say. The name oh, of the company she set up. It's American Jam Makers or something. No, it's, I it's American Riviera. Riviera, something Riviera that's something, it. Yeah. Yeah. Cottage so, is it? American Riviera Orchard. That's. I heard earlier today that apparently the UK. Domain name for it's already been taken by oh, really? someone else, uh, so they're going to extort them for loads of money to send it back to them. Yeah. Yeah. But she's been sending it out to all of her celebrity friends, and I think the point of has she got any that, that, well, ex well, the ones that just you know are already we already yeah. hate Tyler them, Perry, but, and that's it. Yeah, and they're they're the people who um, have supported her throughout, and so they, because she supports them, and they all share stories and all of that. But the, the point about the jam thing is handing them out to your celebrity shows, your celebrity friends, shows that it's all about them, yeah. like, being in this celebrity bubble, yes. as opposed to what she said she was going to do, which is all the charity work. Right. That's, and I, I thought she was going to run for president, and now she's making now jam. Now she's making jam, I mean, yeah. that's a bit of a down you know, isn't I, it? I, it is I'll a bit of contrast. Her. I am quite happy if Meghan Markle is having a career change and just making jam all day. So and she being quiet about So it. she that doesn't <laughs> have time to defame the royal family all day and try and run for president. You've got to make a lot of jam, though, to pay yeah, his so legal bills. Is she trying to be the next Martha Stewart? Is that what she's modelling herself? Yeah, maybe she'll end up in prison. It's her lifestyle, Brad. Martha Slotty, don't be rude about Martha. She went to prison for insider trading. She might have. She did. Telling you. Maybe. Everyone's yeah, it's got a fact. <laughs> I went with her afterwards. Well, you may like her. It doesn't make her a bad person. But she did actually serve time in jail. She also does some brilliant work with uh, Snoop Dogg. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah, I have. Fantastic. Brilliant. I love they that. They make, uh, you know, Snoop. marijuana you should see that. together. You've seen that. Anyway, like there's Snoop. so much information on this show. Snoop Coming up next, we're going to be talking about a bloke from the BBC, um, <laughs> the wife of uh, an MP, um, and the Prime Minister, funnily enough. This is Bank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham and it is, of course, Talk TV. We're here for the next hour, giving you all of the plank that's been going on. Uh, and it's my turn this time. And it's back to the old BBC, I'm afraid, oh, ladies and gentlemen. It, it. Um, but it's not just the BBC this time. It's an individual at the BBC by the name of Nick Robinson. Uh, former political editor, yes. now sits on the Today programme. Yeah. Without doubt, the worst <laughs> radio show, I think, that now exists in, in history. Um, it's absolutely dreadful. Um, very biased every single time they yeah, do anything they've about... they've lost their impartiality. Yeah. I mean, only last Sunday, I think it was, I was watching Laura Kunzberg talking about um, Hamas mm. and talking about the Iranian attack on Israel. And she still says um, Hamas, which is a prescribed terrorist organisation in some countries. Oh, Didn't give Didn't even me a say break. in mm. this country. Yeah. Right? Mm. Well, Nick Robinson took it a step further. He was interviewing Lord Cameron. Right. Um, who is Lord Cameron of Chipping Norton. Of course. It always sounds a bit daft to me. Yeah. You know? you imagine this guy turning up at some UN you know, event <laughs> going, who are you? I'm Lord Cameron of Chipping Norton. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> no. Anyway, so uh, he goes to, to Cameron, well, what about all these um, people in Gaza that mm. the Israelis have been murdering? But when Israel attacks and murders tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians, we say the words, but we do almost nothing. We say the words, That's but disgusting. we do almost nothing, right? Yeah. Anti-Semitic, straight up. Totally anti-Semitic. Right? Yeah. Totally ridiculous. He's basically making out that the Israelis have deliberately murdered, yeah. that's the word yeah. he used, yeah. tens of thousands of yeah. people in Gaza, innocent civilians. Apart from the fact that these numbers are from Hamas, hmm. so there's no reason to take them at, at, at face value. No. You know, there may well they, have been... Hamas have already the Israelis pulled have been, back on a lot of those Also, the Israelis numbers. have admitted they've, 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 they've killed civilian casualties yeah. because mm. Hamas it happens. uses civilian casualties to protect yeah. their own, you yeah. know, armoury. So, but ridiculous that he would use that word. He had to apologise, but he then issued this ludicrous sort of non-apology apology, apology yeah. um, which went on and on and on for about three pages of Twitter, Just in waffle. which he said that he should have been clearer. That was his apology. 
when he was describing Israeli attacks in Gaza yeah. as murder. I think I don't think he didn't say he was sorry. To do with it, right? or, or inaccurate. A non-apology apology. Yeah, yeah. non-apology yeah. apology. Yeah. Words matter, right? And Nick Robinson knows that as political editor of the BBC. Mm. Or you would have thought. Yeah. Mm. And you can't use... In, that's inflammatory language to say that Israel are murdering people. And I just think yeah. that for him, you know, OK, it's a slip of the tongue. He, he, he could argue. But it's not but he a slip didn't. of the tongue. But he didn't. He doubled down on it, more or less, in his apology. That's mm -hmm. the issue. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an apology. He doubled down on it. Yeah. But I find that the, the, the whole bias which is kicking in now, I, it's become well, it's so been there, much to more... Be fair, it's Will, been, it's been, been there forever, Mike. No, of course, but I, it's right? becoming so much mm. more transparent yeah. in terms of that. that and and it's, when it sort of saturates things like the Today programme, yeah. You start thinking, hang on, that was the last bastion of hope. Well, it's been lost for a long time. Yeah, program. I mean, and what it tells you about the internal workings of the BBC for me is that this is how they talk about it inside the building. So yeah. when they have their editorial meetings, they refer to the murder of innocent civilians. Yeah, because they wouldn't feel free to say it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the language they no, like to use. That makes perfect sense. I, I think that there are a lot of people who, you know, they haven't lived um, through something like World War One, World War Two. They don't realise that it is actually just a normal, but you know, very sad consequence that people die during wars. And so people see these figures. Um, you know, even if you take the Hamas from figures and you compare it to other mm. wars, you look at yeah. um, other wars where you've had uh, Muslims fighting Muslims. Yeah. It's only when you've got Muslims and well, there's and Jews many, many together. thousands of people um, being murdered across the world. Yeah, I mean, there's a really good um, Spectator article by Douglas Murray yeah. where he actually. He just crunches the numbers and lays out and says, actually, mm. civilian casualties here are probably are the best. Less. Even yeah, if you take exactly. the masses um, figures, they're actually probably the best you could ever ask mm. for um, in a war. Obviously, you know, every human life is is sacred and it is horrendous that those people have killed. But when you put it into context, it seems absolutely The wars are not mad. very nice. If you, if you look at half the so figures, much... I mean, for Bashir Assad, you look at what's happened in Syria. That is genocide. You really want to look at right. civilian casualties? Yeah. Look at the Syrian war. Well, this is the thing. Look at the figures there. How about this, though? Oh. Of, how about, oh. you know, we don't get into the incidents of, of, there, of, of all of that. But, but how about like this? Exactly. This is from Nick Robinson. Um, I should have been... I don't even know what this means, right? I should have been clearer that I was not expressing my own view, let alone that of the BBC, when I used the word murders. So what? it wasn't his view. It wasn't the BBC. So whose view is it? Whose view is it? And why is he, uh, why is he you know, expressing, those why is he views, expressing a yeah. view that yeah. is not his? Yeah. The well, BBC exactly. are not very good at giving apologies no. uh, because we had them call the Reform Party far right, and yeah. they apologised and then they said, "Sorry, guys, we meant hard right." Yes, which wasn't really any no, better. Doesn't it doesn't make it any better. <laughs> yeah. They were just swapping also, it for a it synonym. It's not the same word. You didn't. You can't say one word as <laughs> another word. It's a different word. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. Leon, what's your second one? Second plank is uh, the wife of Lee Anderson MP, yes. Sinead Anderson. Um, Lee Anderson, of course, defected from the Conservative Party to reform. Yes. Mm. But his wife, who's a councillor, remained a Conservative councillor. Right. However... Is this in Ash Ashfield? In Ashfield, Ashfield yeah, Lee, yeah. Lee Anderson's constituency. However... Didn't stop her appearing in a reform party <laughs> campaigning photo <laughs> with, a, with with leaflets next Oops. to it, all the reform lot saying vote reform. Right. You can't do that if you're a conservative councillor, Sinead. You've got to follow really, in your husband's footsteps. But I mean, footsteps. is that really a surprise? Do you really expect her to say with the conservative? Yeah, that that absolutely. Because yeah. You know, well, technically, yeah, if she's a conservative councillor, there's yeah. elections coming up. Yeah, she should really be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you are you are bound when you become a conservative councillor or candidate. You're bound by a sort of contract yeah. of duty, which is you've got to campaign. For for the Conservatives and no other party. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who your husband is. No. Uh, regardless, if you want to go and campaign for reform, Sinead, you've got to go and join reform. You can't just yeah. sort of take yeah. your, your, the perks of being a Conservative councillor and then and then also enjoy being with the, with the hot yeah, knobs she, of, she, of reform. She should quit being a Conservative yeah. councillor, but what I'm saying is it's not surprising that she's going to campaign for reform given her husband's well, wish. But then I maybe not know. be stupid enough to then get in the right. picture and the actually photo, pose yeah. for the yeah. photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she should announce that she's leaving. I mean, the there is a certain, you know, it. shall we say, loyalty question yeah. here, isn't there? I mean, regardless of what your husband's doing, you know, if you're a, a, allied to a particular political party, yeah. then you stick with it. Well, you've got to think about it sure. this way, right? There's enough people in that ward that voted for her as a Conservative. Yeah. So they expect her to implement Conservative policies. But then she breaks cover. But then she breaks cover. <laughs> there she is. She, she rips open the shirt of Superman yeah. with, her, yeah. with her reform. So what's happened? Yeah. Has, has she been kicked out of the party? She's then? been... I, I believe she's being investigated and disciplined or whatever. whatever. Yeah. How long yeah. does it take to investigate the photo that yeah. they actually posted themselves yeah, yeah, of yeah. her? She's in it. She's 
definitely in yeah. it. Yeah. So, so, how long it would could that be investigation, AI generated. How long that would that investigation? It's a deep fake. It's a deep fake. Even if it is a deep fake, it doesn't take long, does it? You look at it, you get it. Is that her? You show it to somebody who analyzes these things. You can analyze pictures to see if they're fake. Yeah. And if it's not fake, then she's out. But but let's be honest. Who's going to go to the trouble of faking an AI shot of a conservative councillor? I'm paid enough. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you might that might come back to haunt you. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> a lot of elections coming up. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of fakery going. Oh, there's going to be loads of fakery there's going. There's going to be a lot you of can it. Guarantee that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I just Rishi, think, yes, um, sorry, Rishi Sunak for you, Chloe. Yeah. So Rishi Sunak has put this uh, smoking ban through this oh. week, which I honestly just think is a regardless of whether you think the policy it's is a good smoke or bad, screen, isn't it? I, I <laughs> get it. <laughs> Bad dad joke, bad dad joke. Tumbleweed over there, is that? Regardless of what you think of the policy itself, we can all see clear as day that this is just... I I do think that, but we can all see this is just a desperate attempt to make it look like he's doing something. It's much easier to ban things than it is to actually build something or actually fix Britain's problems or fulfil his five pledges. He's like, okay, ban cigarettes, ban vapes, ban... Except he's not banning them. That's the ridiculous thing. He's not banning them, is he? Mm. He's just banning it. Uh, for, a, for, for purchase people. for people who are not old enough yet to buy them anyway. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to stick up for our Prime Minister. Are you? Yeah, because yeah. number one, Crikey. number one, this is a positive <laughs> policy. I think two thirds of the country genuinely think it's no, a good we go. idea. Well, right? well, just like how the more than two thirds of the country agree with lockdown. Hang on, I have the door at home. No, he's called it. Let's do a quick straw poll here. Who thinks it's a bad idea? Hands up. It's a positive <laughs> policy. It's popular. Rubbish. But most importantly, <laughs> we all know smoking's bad for us. Yeah. Good for the Prime Minister. To Lots, of things, bad Lots of things are bad for us. And most yeah, but we shouldn't have the right on, to right. kill ourselves if we want to. How stupid is that? The problem here... Everybody who smokes does not kill themselves. No. Not everybody dies. Not everybody who smokes dies, right? But a lot of people who drive cars die yes. in a car. Yeah, a lot of up. people who, who cycle on the roads die. Yeah. A lot of people who go sunbathing die of sunstroke. Right. And die but we're not addicted to Scottish driving cars. We're not addicted to sunbathing. I am. Robert Jenrick said uh, we should ban... Sorry, we should educate, not ban. I agree with him. Yes. But when it comes to addiction, you cannot educate your, yourself out of an addiction. So I agree with the no, Prime no, Minister. No, I don't know about that. So, so, so they're Lots making, people smoke they are making the point that they want kids not to get addicted in the first place but mm. that's the thing kids are the is the issue is kids getting access to cigarettes in case you guys didn't know you're not meant to have access to them until you're 18 already with the current laws right. that we have yeah. you've got so it's so easy for kids to access cigarettes mm. you know you can easily get an old older kid to give it to you so what you really need is much better policing of that. So, for example, if kids are caught with cigarettes in school, the teachers bring them in, get the police in. Who gave the you this? The police. Those? Why? Are you joking? No. Uh, what do you want the police for? The, uh, to, to get well, the... for smoking? No, 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 no. To get you can't the, even get no. them around for the burglary. <laughs> to, to get the, to get no, the he's having a cigarette. <laughs> I've just, been, the blue light I've just on. been shot. You know. No, no, no. Not, not, not to go after the kid that had the cigarette, but Crikey. to go after the adults that gave it to them. So no. 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 No, you can't do that. No, we, we, we haven't, the police don't do the job they're supposed to be doing. Also, already. very, uh, very they're too busy dancing okay. on yeah. TikTok. So they have this ban in Australia already on vapes. And a very dear friend of mine was down there quite recently... All you do is you just build the black market. So where a yeah. vape would normally cost $10, they were being bought for $60, and they were running a riot on that. Okay. The problem is, is that you start illegal, making these things illegal. Yeah. You just create a whole but secondary market. But they're not market. illegal. I keep saying this. They're not illegal. No. Shops will still be selling cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. You just won't be able to sell them to that bloke that there is, because he's yeah, 30. That's what doesn't make but you'll sense be able to sell them to his mate who's 31. But they'll exactly. phase it out. Yeah. The point being, they'll yeah. phase it out. So, so that's why it's quite actually you know, fairly sensible policy because you're not banning it outright. You're phasing it out. So the kids of the future no, you're not. No. aren't going to be smoking. You're, no. right. you're phasing that's it out. They'll still yeah. be smoking. That's right. And when they made cocaine illegal, they everybody stopped doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. sure there's less less people do it than if it was well, legal. Well, apparently... You'd be well, surprised. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there's any more people that could do it. Yeah, exactly. London is the cocaine capital of the world. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at what Liz Truss thinks about it, because she's always sensible. I am disappointed that a Conservative government is bringing forward this bill. If people want to vote for finger-wagging, nannying control freaks... There are plenty of them to choose from on the benches opposite. 
Very true. Oh. It's you know, actually, that's the first thing I've ever yeah. agreed she with Liz Truss on. Yeah. No, Liz Truss does talk a lot of sense. It's it just is that really the way strange. she says it, yeah. people go, yeah. the wrong messenger. Yeah. She's yeah. the wrong messenger. It is really strange that the Conservatives are the one bringing this policy forward. Yeah. And, you know, it's Rishi, got, Rishi got more support from the Labour Party yeah. than he did from his own party. Well, yeah, but I mean, stand by, this is show, election, yeah. It just shows how left-wing... It's like over, coming out it's over 170 Tories that didn't vote for it. Yeah, yeah you so, had tons of... Abstentions. There's no liberty, there's no freedom in being ill and addicted. I think it's a good policy on Conservative Well, you might as well ban sugar. Down. Well, you're you not coming around for whiskey and cigars. No, no, you might no. as well ban, you know, Donna <laughs> Kebab. I, I, I agree, but there's, I don't think it's the way I to go I think Donna Kebab should be made right. illegal I don't after think two o'clock. I don't want people... <laughs> That's the only time you want to agree. Less agree to disagree, shall we? That's it, yeah. yes. I, I think don't like it when you ridiculous. all fight. We're all friends. We all love each other here. We can have a sensible disagreement on this programme. But the whole thing is nonsensical. It was New Zealand who started this madness. And then they got... And then they got... Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. talk to your neighbours. <laughs> yeah, you know? And um, shop them to even the they've kicked it into touch because they realised it was a stupid idea. Yeah. Exactly. So the same happened with Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So we've now copied a ludicrous, you know, small-minded yeah. little country um, that, as, as, as I think it was described by May West, as uh, um, Auckland was half the size of Queen's Cemetery and twice as dead. Um, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to go there. It's so far away. They locked everybody in so that I nobody, have got they some weren't. Good nobody was allowed to go there. Yeah. They had quite a good rugby team. Nobody's oh, allowed yeah. to go there. You couldn't see your family. And now they bring in this ludicrous law, which Rishi Sunak adopts, and not now the they've dropped one. it. Not the only one. A lot of countries around the world are copying it. Where? Like where? Where? I think it, the Italians think. thought about it. Oh, they <laughs> thought about <laughs> it? <laughs> I mean, the thank Italians God you're not down the street. Anymore. I think the more the point is, is that we need to actually focus on other things at the moment. Everything is a bit chaotic at the moment. There's not, you know, everything's broken. That just seems like a policy where I don't understand why we're yeah, see, focusing there are, so there much. There are some more valuable be, policies out there that need to be pushed through, like protect duty. There are things which could be... Diverting our attention from other things. I suppose there is some merit to it, because in about 25 years or so, you know, the migrants coming over on the small boats won't be able to buy any cigarettes in the shops. <laughs> They'll hate it. They won't be old. They'll enough. be out. But they Back can get the a French. house, though. That'll be Can fun. you imagine the French trying to do it? Yeah. Never happen, would no, it? No, absolutely no way. But this is the trouble. The, the Tories lately have just been introducing laws on top of laws that already exist. So they don't actually need to... Yeah, all they needed to do, as you said, Chloe, yeah. is police the law that they've got. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. They need to, they're just trying to make it look like they're doing something. Mm. And uh, you, we brought up the polling that suggests that most of the country actually support this smoking ban. But if you post a different... They always say that. If you post a different question and said, what would you rather Rishi did, stop the boats or ban smoking? Yeah. Stop I think we'd get a different answer. You can do both. Yeah, no smoking on the boats. <laughs> well, he can't seem to do stop the boats. So no, sure. don't tempt me. I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> Next, they'll be smuggling cigarettes over on the boats with them. They probably, probably are already. Right. Well, that's a new market. Unbelievable. Anyway, coming up, there's stop more uh, from the House of Montecito, um, and also the latest Tory uh, who's got himself in a bit of a sticky situation. Uh, it's all coming up next on Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's Friday night and we're getting very, very close towards when uh, we are going to decide who is the Plank. And there's an awful lot of them this week, which are very, very good. And in fact, they're all number one contenders. Uh, Mr. Will Geddes, you've got... Uh, going back to Montecito. Ah, oh, we're travelling back to Prince Montecito. Harry. Harry. Prince Harry. Prince yes. Harry. Bless his heart. So as Do we, we have know... to call him Prince Harry? Can we not just call uh... him Hazza or something? Yeah, we could call him Harry. whatever you like, Mike. He doesn't it's be, your show. He doesn't want to be part of the royal family, does he? No, of course not. He's not a working member anyway. No. I mean, he's doing his own thing, There's making jam call with him Meghan. His Royal and... Highness, which I don't think she's is, probably is making right. Actually, making the no. Yeah. Well, the company's house thing that's come that come out now, showing he's putting the US as his main uh, place of residence. Right. He's still called on company's house Duke of Sussex. Yeah. So he keeps using that. I wouldn't let him use that. Yeah, I, I, I think they should strip him of You're all the of Duke it. Of to Sussex, be honest. I mean, you live in California. And, unless he's serving a. Per I mean, I'm a strong royalist. You know yeah. that. But unless you're actually a serving royal, you're doing something to contribute yeah. to the revenue GDP of this country mm. by bringing in tourists, yeah. then you're dead weight. Right. You're, you're of no use. Yeah, absolutely. So, sorry, I mate. Agree. Lose your title, off you go. Yeah. So, anyway, in this instance, this is going back to his entitlement. Although he is keeping quite a lot of lawyers in... Uh, in oh, work, yes, it? indeed. You know, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about, Michael. Right. <laughs> so, since, nine, since 2020, he obviously put out this... A contest to the Home Office, mm. and particularly to RAVEC, who is the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royals and P yes, Public Yes, and figures. this is the thing you know an awful lot about. Uh, no, quite, a little bit about it, yeah. yeah. So, you know, their role is obviously to assess the security measures and requirements around various Royals, and particularly the working Royals. Yes. And some time back, 
The royal family even had its own reconciliation, said, look, some of the royals should mm. have protection and security and some shouldn't. Yeah. And suitably, RASP, who are the guys who deliver it on the ground, royalty and specialist protection, of which I have a couple of friends in, mm. um, they basically would be assigned accordingly to ambassadors, to members of uh, parliament, to mm. royalty members. Now, Harry, his big argument was the moment he moved to America, he had to pick up the tab for his own personal security because understandably, not being a working royal, mm. not going on a, uh, a royal visit to a country where it would necessitate security, but quite often the host would have primacy and they would provide the fundamental security structure, then he would have his own assigned security officers. But he's moved to the States with Megan. Yeah. So he has to pay for his own private security. Right. And his Using dad a, was paying for A company for what, like mine, he? obviously not as good, but a company like mine yeah. to do so. <laughs> now, the bill for that is substantial. I'd say his bill's probably topping it at about five mil a year. Right. Um, so it's not insubstantial. But then again, from what he's achieved from Spotify and Netflix, he's got deep pockets, plus the 20 mil he got off the back pocket, obviously, from... Um, uh, from various uh, sort of uh, royal his, purses. Well, yeah, but his mum left him 30 million. And 30 million Trust as well. Trust fund. So, so they, not they're bad. not shy of money. Bad. They're yeah. not shy of money. Anyway, going back to the point I was making, having gone around the houses, uh, a few times. Yeah, the show finishes in 20 minutes. So Does it? Okay. I've so, forgotten so, what the so, point was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So have I. Anyway, the point I is. Thought we about his legal <laughs> he brought in. He brought in. He was talking about his legal. So bill. he brought it to court and he <laughs> contested <laughs> the Home Office and he said, look, I deserve security from RAS I want when I'm in the security. country. <laughs> now, the fact of the matter is, he gets security when he comes into yeah. the country. He doesn't get the full blown coverage which the Royals would have. Yeah. But if he's visiting the Royals and not going off and doing right. his own fun, he would have the fabric of like security provided by the royal dad, anyway. When he came to see his yeah. dad, he got picked up at the airport Absolutely. by security. Yep. He got taken to Clarence yep. House yep. Uh, and Buckingham Palace. Which goes back to this, back to who has primacy. Right. So there, there was a point to go right. around the houses a little earlier. Yeah, it did anyway, go on a bit, though. I'll, be, I'll do a show on it later. Yeah, can you hurry up? So anyway, <laughs> he, he lost it. He yep. lost the case. He's lost the case. It, it was thrown a million out. quid, thrown a million out. pounds. Exactly. Right. Now he then turned around and appealed it and said, I think the Home Office should pick up us taxpayers, that is, pick up 50% of his yeah. legal fees yeah. as well as the home Unbelievable. office fees. Will, can you start again? Because you've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a plank. We're going to have words after yeah. this show. I'm actually really enjoying having it explained out so clearly. Yes. And oh, I love you. So, well, well, listen, if you want to have a private seminar, we will get his security <laughs> company. Be my guest. So, yeah. long, Honestly, long and short of it, tight. he wanted 50% of his bills right. paid for. He didn't get it. The home office to turn around and yeah. say so 10% will be paid for, and that's it. Yeah. And he's moaning and b one tch about he's it. doing so, the yeah. royal okey cokey. Well, he's he one thinks, foot in, he's one it. foot out. You got it. Yeah. You got and it. He can't yeah. have it both ways. And, and, he thinks, and he thinks he should be able to have it both ways. You should have just, I should have just said that at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okey -cokey. He, just, he, he wants, he just wants to be treated <laughs> as a special person. Yeah. And that's what he'd like. But yeah. unfortunately, yeah. he's not a special he person. He's not a special person. He's a plank. He doesn't deserve it. Exactly. Complete plank. Right. Amanda, on to yours. Yeah, this so this is, is this is the big story of the week. Yes. Mark Menzies, an MP, a Tory MP yeah. um, in Lancashire, and he um, it's another to a Tory sort of sleeves sl sleeves sleeves bag sleeves <laughs> bag sleeves scandal. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's actually too many to kind of yeah. keep up with, and, and I they're think getting more the, and more ridiculous. This one, this is one, particularly this ridiculous. one is so shocking. It's um, a story from the Times. Yeah. And I think when I I started reading through it, I thought this cannot be true mm. it cannot be this must be an april fool yeah. thing and they've just been late on it no it is all the allegations have been put out there's now calls for the police to get involved and it's all about him using a uh, party cash for personal use well it's um, better than that this is a guy right mm. who is an mp for filed in uh, lancashire which right. is near uh, blackpool he apparently rang the woman who was the sort of chair of his local party right. at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but we can get to it quicker. I'm sorry, but I was just trying to like. Yeah, but you're going to be taking lessons from him. Let me, let me tell, <laughs> can you tell us what happened? I, okay, so Go on. he's locked. He says he's locked in a flat. He right. calls this elderly local yes. party volunteer, right? And he's begging for this cash to say he needs How to much help. Cash? Yeah, five thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. Yeah. But it then went right. up to six thousand five hundred right. pounds. Because there's a delay. I think a bit of interest that yeah. they're adding on. Yeah. And, and why did he? Why not? Why did he say he wanted the money? Why did he need the money? He's just going because up in line with inflation. Because he was being held by bad people. Being oh, held. really? Yeah, Self-kidnapped? So he, he, was, he was kind of hinting that he'd been kidnapped by right. somebody. Yeah. Three o'clock in the morning, he's asking, he's demanding £5,000 in cash 
which she actually gave him. But it I mean, that's the maddest him. thing. Yeah. But she the gave story it to him. also goes on, and, then, and again, we have to keep saying allegedly, because I don't Well, he denies it, prison. doesn't he? And yeah. he denies it, and there's there's so many allegations, it would actually take up the whole show to talk about them. But it's there's tens of thousands of pounds of money that has... To appear to change, and yeah, and yeah. and that's that's the part that we I don't understand how they're going to get through all of this. Right. The the investigation is going to be a big. But one. this is not this the first great. time it's been in it's trouble, really, right? This guy, really? Yeah. If you think oh, going back got to you think Willie Gate was bad like yeah. a couple of weeks ago when the guy was going on Grinder. Oh, Grinder. Then gets blackmailed. That was brilliant. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. <laughs> it was Grinder. It's Grinder. No, no Willie. Willie Gate. Willie Gate. I'm calling it. I didn't know it's called Willie Gate. I called it that when it started. Yeah, I've been calling it that ever since. It is Perfect, Willie Gate. Michael. His name's Willie, it and it's you know it's a scandal. Willie Gate's good. <laughs> anyway, so this guy goes on to Grinder and sends pictures of himself to this bloke. Yeah. The bloke then says, have you got Ian Duncan Smith's number? And he gives it to him. Stupid. The dog, the dog really. likes a stout the dog, you know, you yeah. can't, well, you can't leave this dog alone in a room with a pint of beer. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Who is this guy? All of these things, though. It's when amazing. They, when you, I mean, if you were just to pick one. Yeah. But no, it's all of them together. Yeah. And the Tories knew about it for about three and months. And they're now oh, investigating. Oh, that's good, isn't they're it? They're that's now good. investigating. Yeah. 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 And they're yeah, now yeah, saying, yeah. we take all our investigations really seriously. It's like, really? You didn't talk about it for, for three, months. three months? Yeah. There's a lot of them going on, these investigations. Anyway, uh, coming up, uh, we're going to be choosing the Plank of the Week. Uh, and I'm going to be giving you my second nomination, which might be over in the United States of America. Uh, this is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are in the final furlough. We're going to be choosing who is going to win. It's a hell of a field this week as well. Um, and my final nomination is somebody that not a lot of people would say is a household name, but he's going to become one, I suspect. Alvin Bragg is his name. Uh, nothing to do with Alvin Stardust or Melvin Bragg. <laughs> uh, he's, I don't know whether he's borrowed both of those names, but... A chipmunk, um, maybe. A chipmunk. I, I loved possible. Alvin Stardust. Alvin though, the, show my age now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's one for the teenagers, right? Um... But Alvin Bragg is the uh, US attorney in the Southern District of New York, which is where currently Donald Trump yeah. uh, is facing charges of hush money being paid to Stormy Daniels. Uh, Stormy, yeah. Um, and Alvin Bragg basically is, un it's hard, I think, for a lot of people in this country to understand, is a Democrat um, prosecutor, which means that he's elected, as a lot of prosecutors are mm. in different parts of America, but he stood on a political platform. Mm. Yeah. And so even though he's, he's a, a sort of, it's a bit like he's in the CPS here, yeah. he's elected and he's allowed to have a political point of view, wow. which is why they're going after Donald Trump in Manhattan, because they know that that's where the place he least likes to have, have support. Yeah. Um, Alvin Bragg stood as a candidate to be Southern District US Attorney on the platform of getting Donald Trump. He basically had it in his campaign manifesto, yeah. I'm going to get Donald Trump, and that was how he was elected. So now he has got Donald Trump, and the case got underway this week. And it is the most ridiculous case almost anybody has ever seen, because he's being accused of something which isn't actually a crime. Mm. You know, they're claiming that it's a crime, but in fact it's really not. No. And the most ridiculous thing is that he's up in front of a judge, uh, who I'm just going to find his name, Justice Juan Merchant, as they're doing um, a jury selection. And the judge has basically said to him, you have to turn up every day, you're not allowed to, um, you know, have a day off. Oh. You're not allowed to leave the city. You're not allowed to go and see even your own son right. who's graduating from high school um, in Washington, D.C. And here's Donald Trump outside the court after yeah. the first day. Have a look. As you know, my son has graduated from high school and it looks like the judge will not let me go to the graduation of my son who's worked very, very hard. Uh, he's a great student. He's very proud of the fact that he did so well. I was looking forward for years to have graduation with his mother and father there. And it looks like the judge isn't going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. It's unbelievable. And yeah, unlike... but I mean, I don't understand why Bragg is able to do this because mm. he's so conflicted yeah. because of his evident prejudice. Mm. Right. I don't understand how, well, how, how that works. That's how we don't understand American justice. Yeah. Mm. Because almost every place where Trump is being prosecuted is a place that's run by Democrats. Yeah. And they're producing all of these. Which and is this immediately is, com complex. And this is the case that's probably going to be the only one that goes on before yeah. the election. Yeah. But they're going to take at least two weeks just to select the jury. Because mm. believe it or not, one of the things they have to ask them is, do you have a view of Donald Trump? Mm. And everybody's got a view of Donald Trump, mm. so they've already dismissed something More than like... Half. And there's only half. a limited number of the jurors that they can equally dismiss as yes. well when it comes down to jury yeah. selection. So well, this is it. But this could be really But they've got hundreds of jurors who won't be eligible because no. they've got a view of Donald Trump. Yeah. But the reason that I want to make him the plank of the week is that not withstanding the fact that he's brought this ridiculous case, but it's actually doing better for Donald Trump's campaign than anything. Yeah. Have a look at Donald Trump's campaign video 
and tell me this is not the next president of the United States. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silent. And I am the only one that can save this nation because you know they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way, and I will never be moving. On November 5th, 2024, justice will be done. We will take back our country, and we will make America great again. We've got Willie Rag and Mark Menzies. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's the next... Pre- I mean, isn't that brilliant? Yeah, so, it's very I mean, powerful, sh- isn't he's it? He's showing himself, walking into the court, showing himself, you know, under pressure. The more they try and, and, and kind of prosecute him, mm. the more powerful he becomes. Well, it's like yeah. when he got his mug shot taken yeah. and that sold... He put it on T-shirts, campaign T-shirts, and yeah. he sold a load of them and raised loads of money for, <laughs> for the campaign. But it's so politicised. This And it is, you know, to use the word... A witch hunt yeah. against <laughs> Donald Trump. That was it is. Yeah. Yeah. But it actually but this is. But you see, as every every single new trial gets brought up and fails mm. and is dropped, the more powerful he becomes. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, 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 they're literally trying to throw mud at the wall. Yeah. And it's not sticking. No, no, that's, no. That's, we've got to be. That's we've got to be. Issue. It's going to be a horrible home goal for we've the We've got to be really Democrats. grateful in this country we don't have politicised judiciary because you know yeah. you want a well, fair Well they tried trial. though didn't they? You expect they, they did, did try, try with Brexit they, they did. Yeah. Well they did try. You know, yeah. that yeah. woman what was it Lady Hale with the yeah, little, that's the, right. little that's right. spider thing. Spider, yeah. Spider, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever it was. <laughs> Unbelievable. Incredible. Anyway we're at the end. Uh, we yeah. have to choose who's going to be Plank of the Week and I think there can only be one this week and I'm going to have to give it to Amanda because it's got to be Mark Men- Menzies, hasn't it? Yeah. It's it's Mark Menzies. This is your first time. Look at it. Going it's got an Oscar. Brilliant. Speech. Oh, speech. Speech. Hi, hey, Mum. You um, <laughs> thank you, Mum. You love me. You really love me. I don't remember who did that, but somebody did that. Thank anyway, you, thanks Mike. to all of you. Thank uh, you, It was a brilliant plank, actually. Because yeah. it, I mean, I could have given it to, to Harry or Meghan or indeed to, uh, to Humza Useless, but I think he's won it quite recently. Uh, and even uh, to this Alvin Bragg, Bragg guy, whatever he's, he is. He's good. But uh, Plank of the Week, of course, we'll be back same time next week. Thanks to the panel. Thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, you'll be back. Well, no, oh, you won't be back. I'll be back later on tonight, 11.30, uh, with the World According to Mike Graham. We'll see you then. Introducing Mike and Kevin's Ice Cream for Snowflakes. Indulge in our deliciously sanctimonious flavors, such as Extinction Raspberryan, Cancel Culture and Cream, Cookie Doble Warming, Non Bindberry, Woka Cola, Ginger Nut, and Vanilla. All made from our organic gender fluid. Mike and Kevin's Ice Cream for Snowflakes.